It's time for another C64 gameplay. I'm Rob, and this time it's Microprose's F15 Strike Eagle. Uh, it's I, I consider this as the missing link of Microprose's simulation games. Uh, it sits between the early games like Spitfire Ace I covered not too long ago in being you know, a fairly simplistic small simulator for a limited number of missions, and the more and but it introduces a lot of technical uh, aspects to the simulation that are traits that the later games they're more well known for uh, offer. Um, I've just, the demo's come up, it's a very fast attract mode. Um, this is, like the early games, originally written on the Atari by Sid Meier for the, the Atari home computers, um, and was converted over to the C64 by Grant O'Rani, who definitely did Solo Flight, and may have done one or two other games. Um, so you can see it's a little, it is ch a little chuggy. I'll get into that. Um, while the demo runs, I'll cover a little more of the introduction. The game itself simulates the F-15 Strike Eagle, which is an upgrade of the original F-15 Eagle, so it's a multi, you know, air and ground capable combat plane. You have a choice of seven uh, different scenarios. Uh, they're, they're all based on real missions, and they're all basically ground target uh, attack runs, but you need to fight your way in there. Um, and then we'll dive in and run through the front end. Uh, that's off the demo. So you have these seven scenarios. Um, they're all based on real missions. There's actually real, a really good manual with this game that covers what the, the basic scenarios are. Um, and like with you know, the, the Ace series of games, by that of course I mean Spitfire Ace, uh, Hellcat Ace and Mig Alley Ace, you can have multiple players you can sort of all go for the, the score aspect. So I'm gonna, so you can see you can have up to four players. I will set myself to pilot to the nice ballads. We'll play the first mission. So simulation comes up. So I'm not going to really cover the controls because there's a lot of controls here. It's a flight sim. There's a lot of stuff in there. And even the screen breakdown is probably going to be a little time consuming while I try to engage this fighter. That is a fighter plane. <laughs> um, and that's one of the things. It's got a fairly simple graphic engine. These shapes are a little tricky to tell. The frame rate definitely feels a little sluggish. That's really one of the weaknesses I have with this. So, run through. So the object of this of this mission is I need to fly to the white square on that map that's now got a little black square around it, um, bomb it, and then return to my carrier, which is the little white square in the ocean on the map, the lower left. I need to, of course, whilst doing that, avoid uh, planes you know, being shot and try not to get blasted by radar, by you know, anti-air. So you can sort of see the lower left region is the is the map. You can see various like air bases and uh, SAM sites. The middle is the radar, and you can adjust the range of that. I've sort of at the default range now. You can see that there's now a fighter approaching, so I should probably break off. Remember, you run and go to engage. He has fired something at me missile-wise. Our target. Um, when you set your nav target, which is the, the cursor arrow keys, you'll see the little NAV popping up on screen, which is you basically fly to that heading and it directs you to the target. Um, you won't see it for a while, but when you're in range, there'll be a little, you'll start to see a little grey blob on the ground, which represents the actual target. Uh, in the lower right section, you see basically the arm state. So you can see that there's the plane, you can see I've got guns active. The little yellow blobs that are under the that's under the gun and sort of position on the other side are drop tanks. Um, the F-15 is actually drop tanks, and you have you have a num you have those to extend rage. You could then drop them when they run out, which is when you have about thirteen thousand uh, pounds of fuel remaining. So now approach the target. I'm going to extend the speed brakes and go into a dive, switch to bombs. Except I got hit, and I'm going to have to cancel my dive. It's interesting now, because now I've been damaged, and it's really impacting the control 
controlling controllability of the of the plane. So we have to put more thrust. It's very hard to keep the nose up, uh, which is not good. Um, I did play this a little earlier just to remember it, and I had I had good fun just like actually completing the objective and then being hit on the way back to base. So it's a little more dangerous now when it's. So, I mean, presentation is fairly spartan. It does, like I said, it reminds me a lot of the earlier, the earlier Microprose games. Um, and because this is what, 1985 or 84, I believe? Um, the version I'm, I'm actually running this off is a 1986 re-release. Let's see how we go off the target. Target hit. Okay, so I've taken that out. Alright. We've got the base destroyed, now it's just a case of returning to base. Surviving, so... You can sort of see from our instrumentation above the radar, there's the four little lights. Um, that's one for when you're being targeted by a radar installation, one being targeted by IR low altitude and low fuel so at the moment I'm obviously fighting for to, to for the sake of low altitude to keep to keep my altitude up so that's why that's glowing in that case I think, believe it's under 10,000 uh, 6,000 feet six five six thousand feet seems to be about the range when that goes out um, see if I, I think I can make past the speed of sound Now you can see using the afterburners is not really a good move, but <clears throat> I'd like to just try and clear as much distance as I can, and as I've got a lot of fuel left, um, I think I'd rather use that and... There we go. But yeah, I mean, for the period, the graphics aren't too bad. They've, I mean, they've chosen to go with low resolution rather than high resolution, and that might be a good or a bad sign. Um, it definitely doesn't, doesn't look as crisp as, say, Stellar 7. They've also... I don't think they've done a really good job in bringing this over, as it's very choppy. Um, I'd love to actually play this on the Atari at some stage, just to see how it compares. You know, there, there's... There's a lot more CPU power available on those machines, so they'll probably do a better job. And that's sort of where I think why well, I didn't really enjoy this that much as a kid. Um, I actually got this as a birthday present, <laughs> and it was sort of like, "Ooh, big flight!" You know, rather impressive looking flight game. But it turned out not to be so much. And I think a large part of the the lack of enjoyment was because of the of the frame rate. Like even Jot, like fighting to keep the plane stable feels a lot harder than it needs to than it should, and because of the responsiveness. You know, and that's something that sadly gets amplified as I am playing through an emulator. I do need to sit down and fire this up on my real C64 again and just compare and see how it feels. Now, the good news is we're approaching the target. Well, not our target, we're approaching our base, our carrier. So, in order... In order to land, you don't have to land as such like you would in most other games. Here you just need to get below 3,000 feet and as you pass over it. So you can see it's come up on our main radar. You can see it, it's the light blue blip. And if we could just keep this afloat, we'll be almost there. Uh, I'm going to have to cancel the speed break here because it's obviously... I mean, actually, this experience reminds me a lot of, um, there was a... 
So there we are, that's the first mission done. But the experience of there holding the plane and trying to use speed actually reminds me of a real life uh, incident. I, I saw a video, I, can, I might link it below uh, in the description, of a documentary where an Israeli pilot had actually collided with another in a training exercise, ripped the wing off, and was able to get the, the F-15 back simply by just flying with full afterburner. And it reminds me of that. Um, I don't know if, I don't think it's worth diving into a second mission. They're all, the seven missions basically flow the same. And then you keep your score as you move through, and, you know, you challenge your other friends. Um, so there's not much more to it. I mean, you don't get the, the realistic persistence of a campaign. You know, you don't have pilot records that are saved to disk. I don't believe these scores get saved. Um, and that's sort of the basic what is the, you know, these seven missions flow similar. Um, you know, you have the difficulty level. We adjust that. So arcade at the lowest actually removes the rolling. So when you turn, you basically yawing like, so it's simple. And they all add a bit more challenge, a little more difficulty as you increase them, increasing your aspects of realism, which is one of the things that does impress me with this, with the game. Um, most, one of the first things I remember reading, reading the manual as a kid playing it was, you just see when I went to, to dive to attack the target, I put the speed brakes on. If you go into a dive with a fair bit of speed, without the speed brakes, you can actually rip the wings off and, and end the mission, like the plane will blow up. I'm actually impressed with that from a simulation perspective, as definitely other games from the period, you know, something like Ace didn't really do that, and... I can't even remember of many more re of many flight simulators that came after this that actually did that. Whether it was designed that it was a feature that wasn't a good feature for playability or not, I'm not sure. But it definitely was an interesting taste. Um, you know, the fact that you're juggling, you know, you're armed with your primary cannon, you're armed with short-range uh, heat-seeking missiles, longer-range radar missiles, the bobs, all of those things also add up to, you know, you, you're managing a lot of systems, you've, and that all works pretty well. And, so, I mean, where do I sit? The speed, the frame rate, really drags this game down a lot. I feel that it was very, it's very hard, like, even going back now, it just feels almost unplayable at points. Um, and I think that that drags down what is a bit of an interesting little fly, flight game. I mean, I don't think, I think that this won't hold your attention that long. I mean, personally, if I wanted to go for a flight game right now, and a quick one that I didn't have to worry about, campaigns and stuff, I'd probably fire up Ace. Um, playing that when I did the play a little while ago, I really fell in love with that game again. Like, I liked it a lot when I was younger, but really reading over it, trying getting into it recently when I did that play, I really fell in love with it. This, I see the potential, but I see where it's a bit of a disappointing conversion. Uh, so I think, keep that in mind. It's probably worth checking out, at least to see sort of that step, you know, after this, you start getting the micro sims like uh, Project Stealth Fighter and Gunship, both of which are incredibly technically advanced games. And they tend to be a little more playable than this. So, probably worth checking out regardless. Um, I hope that was a good little introduction to the game. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks to everyone for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share if you enjoy this or want to see more C64 plays. Um, and I look forward to giving, to bringing another game next time. Thanks.